This is Advanced Algebra Lesson 6-5, Completing the Square. In previous lessons, we talked about the various forms of a quadratic. We talked about how we could take a f uh, an equation that was in vertex form and make it into standard form. In this lesson, we're going to convert from standard form to vertex form. Without graphing, we're going to explore two methods. The first method is called completing the square. When completing the square, I want to first start out by looking at a trinomial and decide to just decide what it would take in order to make it a perfect square. So I have put uh, an area model on the screen and I've taken my x squared plus 14x and I have divided the 14 14x into in a half. So if I looked at this, the means the dimensions of this would be x and x plus 7 and x plus 7. So what is it that would be needed to make this, to complete this area model? So 7 times 7 is 49. So what we would need to add to this x squared plus 14x would be 49. And that would be a perfect square trinomial. Another way to, to look at it without using an area model is to take a look at our value for b, which is 14. And what we do is we take half of b and square it. So half of 14 is 7. 7 squared is 49. We're going to use this now when working with the uh, completing the square for various other quadratics. We're going to use the concept of completing the square in order to change our equation from standard form into vertex form. So remember, we're still going to use b over 2 squared in order to, to, to do this. So if you take a look at my first equation that I have here, it's y equals x squared plus 10x minus 4. And we want to put that in vertex form. Currently, it's in standard form. And it is not a perfect square. So what we're going to do is we're going to manipulate the equation to make it a perfect square. So right here, this minus 4 is not, is kind of limiting me in order to make this a perfect square. So I'm going to move this minus 4 out of the way. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides. So that leaves me with x squared plus 10x on the right hand side. And then I have y plus 4 on the left. What that does is it leaves an opening here for me to add something in order to make this right-hand side a perfect square. And so if you look over here, I have a little s calculation using b over 2 squared. So b is 10, 10 over 2 is 5, 5 squared would give me 25. So that means I'm going to add 25 to both sides. So you can see here I kind of did that. I have it here in red, and then I have it in the next line. So now I have x squared plus 10x plus 25 is equal to all of this on the left. If I simplify that on the left, I get y plus 29. Now this is where your, your experience with the binomial square theorem helps us. We know that if this is a perfect square, we can apply the binomial square theorem, and that would collapse down to being x plus 5 quantity squared. So if you notice, my equation now is in vertex form, and then I can identify the vertex of my parabola, which would be negative 5, negative 29. And if you look over here, I have a graph shown of this equation. It's kind of small, but you can see that I've graphed it, and the, the minimum value here is negative 5, negative 29, which is actually the vertex. The second method we can use to take an equation from standard form and to put it in, putting it into vertex form is using the opposite of b over 2a. We want to use this method when our value from a is not 1 or negative 1. It's a little bit more complicated to get it into vertex form, so I'm going to first draw your attention to lesson 6-4. When we expanded the equation y minus k equals a times x minus h squared, and we wrote it into standard form, we found that we got this large equation. And then we broke it down and we said a stood for a, 
B was the opposite of 2AH right here. That was our value for B. And C stood for this here, 2H squared plus K. Now, if we're going to take a look at that, here we have an H. So I, when I'm working in standard form, or I'm sorry, in vertex form, I need an H. So I can use what I know here about what B equals and manipulate my equation by dividing both sides by negative 2A. So I know H now is uh, the opposite of B over 2A. And I can do that same thing for K. I have an equation here that's got a K in it. That's this part over here. And so I'm going to solve for k. I'm basically going to move this a h squared over to the other side. So now I know k is equal to c minus a h squared. So now that I know these two values for h and k, I can work with my equation that's in standard form and move it into vertex form using these two really basic equations. Let's see how we can apply the second method to this next problem. Suppose a ball is thrown straight up from a height of 6 feet with an, initi an initial velocity of 48 feet per second. Then the ball's height, y, after x seconds is given by the formula y equals a negative 16x squared plus 48x plus 16. We want to first rewrite the formula in vertex form of the equation for a parabola. So if you look here, we have our equation y equals negative 16x squared. So that's going to be our value for a. And then we have 40 plus 48x, so that's our value for b. And then we have plus 6, that's our value for c. So you can see here I've identified my ABCs. And so now I can use what I found out, or what I discovered from above from our previous lesson 6-4. I know h is equal to the opposite of b over 2a, and I know k is equal to c minus a h squared. So I can go ahead and plug in my values here. B, I'm going to plug in 48, and 2 times the negative 16 for my A, so that equals 1.5. Then for K, I have my value for C, which was 6, and then minus a negative 16 times 1.5 squared gave me a value for 42. So now I know my H is 1.5 and I know my k is 42, so then I can go ahead and plug it into my equation, and I now have taken my equation from standard form and put it into vertex form. Then it asks me to find the maximum height of the ball and the time it takes the ball to reach that point. Well, we know that our vertex is 1.5 and 42, so that tells me that that is my maximum height, and if we want to just confirm that, we can go ahead and graph it. When you graph the equation and find the maximum value or the vertex, you find that you have 1.5 and 42. This concludes Lesson 6-5.